Well, good evening, Afford a Plane crew, builders, and flyers. This is Terry Adair with Tango Alpha One. And Tango Alpha One is uh, in the garage where she was built back home. And I've been trying to assess what the problem was on my engine out. <clears throat> now, I've got a little light here I'll try to shed on here and uh, let you guys see these are the cylinders uh, I did discover that I had a bit of an exhaust link on the um, PTO cylinder but it didn't look like anything that should have called an engine out but <clears throat> let me share with you guys what I did find so what's missing off the front of the airplane is the G50 reduction gear drive and uh, I just happened to notice as I was pulling the man manifold off of the engine that uh, I had some rubber debris building up around these bolts right here. And you can see that rubber debris on the floor. It just chewed up rubber. Now, <clears throat> what could that possibly be? There's a rubber donut that goes between the engine and the propeller and uh that thing was chewed up well gee it's supposed to absorb shock and vibration if uh there's any imbalance on the engine or imbalance on the prop um but <clears throat> in this case uh, that little donut just got torn to shreds now i'm going to walk over here to my workbench and i'm going to show you some of the parts that i found in here and uh, let's see if I can set this light down. And uh, so here I get some miscellaneous parts. There's my donut, guys. This is uh, what's supposed to take the load off the engine or off of the prop in the engine and dampen those vibrations. And then here we've got some other pieces right here. And uh, this thing was just completely shredded up. So... Well, what would cause that donut to shred up? Well, it, it is 21 years old, but I don't know if that's what caused it to shred. So, I went ahead and split the case of the uh, drive, and uh, here's the cover right there, and here's the case. I've got it uh, taken apart. My next task here is to kind of remove these gears, but uh, this is what I noticed. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but this lower gear, there is, I'm, let me get a little pick here so that I can kind of show you guys. So like right down here, there's a bearing, a big one, just like, just like this one here, this cage bearing. There's a bigger one right down here. Now, when I pulled this thing apart, I found these metal shavings down inside this case. And uh, those metal shavings came from the cage that goes to this bearing back here. And what I noticed in trying to rotate the gear is that, well, in some spot it's kind of easy and then it gets to a spot right here where it sticks. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm imagining what happened here is that this bearing failed or at least the cage on that bearing failed and it started coming apart and and jamming up the gears and of course that put a lot of extra torque you see i can roll that but i get to about right well right there and it locks and you can actually see the whole case down there rotating so the bearing's no longer turning, but the outside housing, meaning this area here on that bearing down there, is rotating. It's rotating inside the case. So, and, and then when we get to a certain point here, it just locks up. So, I believe what happened is we lost this bearing, and uh, that bearing caused uh, excessive torque on the donut. And then the donut just ripped itself apart and uh, <clears throat> started to melt and shred uh, on the other side of the case, which would be back in here. 
Let's see if I can get my camera to, there we go. So right back in here, now there's one side that goes over here uh, that attaches to the donut. This, this piece here, which actually goes right down on those splines. And so part of the donut attaches to this side. And then of course, the other part of the donut attaches to the PTO side of the motor, which is right there. And there's six, uh, like six millimeter uh, bolts that go through here and then also on the other side. Uh, I did do a compression check on my engine. Um, both cylinders are reading uh, right at 96 PSI. <clears throat> now, I talked to Michael over at Stoll uh, Craft Aviation. Uh, uh, I believe that's the name of his business. Uh, and, and he told me he likes to see about 100. Now, I'm at 96. Uh, I didn't see anything major uh, inside the cylinders. And I took some pictures that I can put on Facebook later to show you guys. But I believe the big, the big problem with uh, Tango Alpha 1's engine, uh, engine out or prop stoppage, which I had, because, uh, you know, technically I guess the engine did not go out. I was able to restart. <clears throat> However, I was not getting the power that I expected. And, uh, well, if the engine's turning and the prop's not turning, I, I suspect we're not going to get the power that we, uh, <laughs> we're accustomed to. Uh, so anyway, my next order of business here is uh, removing the gears. And uh, I, I'm guessing these things are pressed in here, so I'm going to have to be careful with them. And I'm uh, going to have to replace that bearing. Probably good to just replace all of them. <clears throat> and we'll see what that costs. Uh, but I believe that's probably going to take care of the problem with Tango Alpha 1. So I wanted to give you guys an update. I know that, you know, a lot of you guys have been wondering what was going on. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of busy um, at home and family issues and, and also looking at some other airplanes. But uh, I finally got a chance to get out here and take this thing apart. And I think it's pretty obvious, you know, that bearing right there, tearing itself up, causing the gears to lock up. Um, I am grateful that it does not look like the actual gears are damaged, just that bearing. So anyway, uh, from this point on, I guess I will get in contact with uh, Michael or, or Matt Dandar and see if I can get some new bearings for this G50 uh, drive gear and uh, we can put it all back together and and uh, see see how it's performing you know one thing I did mention or maybe I didn't mention it but I never did see uh, any kind of reading on my uh, EGT or you know my EIS here my Grand Rapids information system I never got a warning of an overheat so <clears throat> the engine it really should not have just stopped and and so all the evidence that I'm looking at um, leads me to believe that it was my redrive that uh, caused this issue and not the engine itself which I'm so happy because you know uh, Michael did uh, rebuild and put the uh, new pistons and and uh, had the cylinders redone and all of that and new seals um, even did the seals on the front and the bearings so I'm glad that, that all that work is, is not wasted. I'm just coming over here to get another light because it's dark outside. So I'm, I'm just glad a lot of that work was not wasted on the engine. Now we'll have to get some more uh, seals for the uh, <coughs> exhaust manifold, uh, more gaskets there. And I, I may put some of that copper high temperature sealant on there because you can see right there there's a lot of burned oil coming out of that that front one was seeping quite a bit but uh this could have been uh one of the reasons that um i started noticing a little bit of an irregular throttle response in the mid-range but i definitely need to get in here and clean that up you know we got the new bearings and the seals uh back there and uh might be a good time just to get everything nice and clean and 
and uh, before we put it back together and to go um, get her flying again so anyway guys I'm gonna let you go <clears throat> I don't want to take up all your time tonight uh, but I believe that's the answer uh, for Tango Alpha 1 here in Houston Texas I'm Terry Adair and I'll talk to you guys later. Keep on building, keep on working, and get your ass flying. All right, guys, good night.